Hello. Today we're going to talk about how to create a faceplate in InTouch without creating a separate tag for each data item you're trying to read from the PLC. So basically, the customer called me and said, hey, I want to be able to pop up a faceplate from one of these push buttons here and then give the ability to kind of send a command down to the PLC or read some status from the PLC. But it's just kind of some faceplate information. It's information that does not need to be in tags. There's no alarming. There's no trending. So, so we can do some things where we just use a standard set of tags, you know, a handful of tags, and change the pointers to the I.O. address in the PLC to reuse the faceplate and use the same tags over and over again without having to recreate those each time. So if I look at this runtime, you can see I have a, some push buttons here. If I click on this push button, it's going to bring up this little faceplate. And then I can send a command down to the PLC with a start or a command or I can abort. But it's showing this is sequence number one. Right? If I click on this second push button here, it's going to bring up the same faceplate, but it's now pointing to sequence number two from a PLC addressing perspective. And then I can start or send a command down to sequence number two, and of course the same thing for number three. So let's take a look at develop and see how we do this without having to create separate tags for each one of these instances that we're talking about here. So I'm in development mode. I'm looking at my tag name dictionary. So I created some tags, individual tags called sequence abort, sequence command, sequence number, and sequence start. Of course, some IO discretes and a memory message type tag pointing to an access name of PLC1. So on each of the push buttons, I set it to equal sequence one, sequence two, or sequence three, depending which one I click on. So if I look to see what's behind this button, so if I double click on this sequence one button, basically it's going to fire off an action script that's basically setting that sequence number to sequence one, and it's going to call uh, SQL test, which is my faceplate. If I look at sequence number two, it's basically going to set that variable, same variable, sequence number to sequence two, and then call the same faceplate. Right, so same thing for, for number three. Right, so I'm just passing in the name of the sequence number to this variable, sequence number. Um, so when I can open up my faceplate, it's going to use that to determine, set my I.O. references to point to the correct tags in the PLC. So if I look at the actual pop-up itself, sequence test, if I open him up and I go look at the window scripts, this is where the work is being done. On show, when this window first pops up, this is where I'm going to set the sequence number. Remember, I'm passing in that sequence number from the button, whether it's going to be sequence number one, two, or three, and it's going to set the address, the I.O. address of these different tags. SQL start, okay, I'm going to set the address. And this is a control logics PLC, so it's a symbolic name. So there's some user-defined data types in that control logics PLC called you know, sequence one, sequence two, sequence three, and there's the dot command dot start and dot abort functions, right? So just a very quick little script here. I can use the same set of tags, the same three tags, sequence start, sequence command, sequence abort, use those same tags over again. I'm basically passing in the name of the sequence number, and then I'm using this to set the address of the variables so it points to a different set of variables in the PLC. This way, the user can actually create one faceplate, reuse that faceplate over again, all he needs to do, if I want to create a, a ne next sequence number, I go here and uh, duplicate this, point this up here, make this substitute my strings, make this sequence number four, just from a aesthetic perspective, and then I go here and I change this to point to sequence number three, and if I have sequence number four, and then if I have a uh, user-defined data type of sequence number four in my PLC, that's all I need to do. I go to runtime, and it's going to pop up the data for sequence number four, and it's going to allow me to send some commands down to the PLC. So that's what the customer wanted to do. They want to be able to very quickly, you know, use one faceplate. This is a very simplified version of the faceplate he's going to use. It's going to have a lot more variables in it, but this is a little test scenario here that we put together to prove out that we can use the same tags, same three tags, if you will, and then based on the actual sequence number of the variable we're passing into it, change the address of the tags using the function of uh, the set IO function, right? Well, thank you for joining us. Please check out other videos on the Knowledge Center site. Thank you. Need to learn more about this and other in-source products? 
Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for in-source products. Whether you're using a classic InTouch and Historian architecture or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. To register or learn more, click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching this in-source video.